without limits or judgment. A place for you and people like you to tell your most effed up stories. everybody and welcome to another episode of effed up stories i'm your host will pender and i'm your co-host ryan sharp and tonight we will be discussing something for the first time on our show that may border along the lines of cryptozoology but first there has been quite a few more paranormal ufo and conspiracy stories added to our site and uh, I really think you should check those out. Uh, you can check them out at fdupstories.com. That's E-F-F-E-D-U-P-S-T-O-R-I-E-S.com. And further, we will be doing a show in the near future that deals with the negative near-death experiences. So if you or anyone you know has had a negative near-death experience and you would like to be on the show, please send your story to will at fdupstories.com or Ryan at fdupstories.com. And also, we will be doing a fan-oriented open line show where you, the fans, get to share a story, ask a question, or give us your thoughts on something in the world of the paranormal. So if you would like to be involved with that, contact us with your details as well. And of course, as always, if you have any paranormal stories, pictures, video, or what have you, and you would like to get it on our site or in a podcast, go to the official site and submit at fdupstories.com. That's E-F-F-E, sorry, E-F-F-E-D-U-P-S-T-O-R-I-E-S.com. So with that said, on to the topic of this podcast. A little while ago, a fan submitted a particularly effed up story. In this story, she and others witnessed on multiple occasions furry hands, not unlike monkey paws, shoot under the door leading down to the basement floor, violently and aggressively scrabbling and reaching as if trying to grab someone. After reading her story, I knew I had to get her on the show, so tonight, here to share her terrifying ordeal is Sherry Lowe. Hello, Sherry. Hi there. So, first, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, like, before this event, did you believe in the paranormal, or were you a skeptic? Well, I always call myself kind of open to it, but skeptical. Sort of like um, the way that um, Harry Houdini was, in, in effect. You know, how he wanted to believe it, but he always you know, looked for the logical answer. I, I consider myself a logical person, but I, I'm not... Um, blind to the fact that there's a lot that we don't know about in this world. Okay. So, did you ever have uh, any uh, paranormal events prior to the, uh, the the main topic of this, uh, well, this podcast? I wouldn't say um, paranormal uh, events. I might have had a little bit of uh, sensitivity that... Uh, maybe manifested itself when I was about, oh, I was a kid and my, I was down in my basement bedroom and my, uh, mom, my uh, dog, and I was, a, I'm dog crazy, still had dogs. And um, mom said that uh, he ran out the gate, somebody left over, and the moment he got hit by the car, she heard me just screaming down in the basement. Wow, so it was almost as if, uh, as if you knew the instant that yeah. it happened. Yeah, yeah, and I knew something happened to him. I knew that, and I was only at that time maybe, oh, 
nine, nine years old. Okay, so did you ever okay. have... Oh, sorry, go on. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I may have had, like, the odd dream, but, you know, that was that was all, and I never really took it that seriously. Okay, kind of like, like a mother knows when her child is in danger yeah, kind of thing. you know, I just kind of shook it off as, oh, that was weird, and that seems to be my <laughs> byline, and I'm like, wow, that was weird. Oh, for sure, for sure. So, mm -hmm. you know, for our fans here, I mean, l l let's just, you know, hear the whole story as detailed as possible. Um, the whole story of the, the monkey paws and, and you know, uh, the time it happened, and, and we'll go from there. Well, it, the time that it happened, um, the first time being when I was uh, uh, 17 and the last time when I was 19, um, that was a time... Um, that was a um, really unsettled time for me personally. Um, and my family, we were all uprooted. I moved when we moved when I was uh, 12. And weird start, things started happening when we moved into that house. Uh, a year after we moved to North Battleford, we rented a place a half a block away, and then we moved into this house. But, um, just so many weird things happened. But, you know, it was also the age that I was, me and my friends were fiddling around with, like, Ouija boards, and we were... Uh, looking at witch books and demonology, I dabbling, you know, none of us were, you know, hardcore or whatever, but we were definitely interested in the cult. I've always been interested in the cult, always, and, you that, know, among a lot of other things. That's so, interesting. Um, <laughs> I was actually going to ask you if, if you would, well, I'll get to that after, but... Uh, well, you just... a whole bunch of other things happened leading up to this, but I, if you want me to just jump to the actual uh, monkey paw uh, event, I can do that. No, no, um, let's, let, let's start, I mean, right leading up to it, because there, there could okay. be some interesting tidbits there. Well, it, it, it really is. Um, when we uh, moved uh, from Saskatoon, I was 12, my older brother was 14, and then I had a little brother who was about four. And... Um, it was uh, very hard on my brother, I think, the age. And uh, he had the basement bedroom, me and Dean were upstairs. And he, when we, I mean, he was fine until we moved to that place that the monkey paw thing happened. And then my older brother got so withdrawn and angry, and he was just frightening. Like, he just stayed, he, 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 he underwent a total uh, change. But uh, he got married at 18 and moved out. But wow. I was still there, eh? And uh, so, the. <sighs> Something happened before that, and I don't know if it's related, but it's really weird. I was uh, dating this guy from 14, at 14 to 15, and um, we were driving by, in between North Battleford and Battleford. I'm sorry, can you, sorry. Can you, can you uh, you're, you're a little <laughs> low there. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> that's, that's okay. Is that, so, is that better? Yeah, that's, that's much better. So you you were dating okay. a guy, you were, you were 14. It, yeah, it was really strange. Um, so I dated for about a year, and it was just around the end of our relationship. I was 15, and we were driving on this road by uh, a monk's retreat, and it's very windy, and it was dark. It was October, and it had those uh, reflector lights all the way around the windy road because it had, like, cliffs, or uh, sharp drop-off. Not really a cliff, Saskatchewan's pretty flat, but a sharp drop-off on the other end, day. Eh? So we were in the back seat, and his buddies were driving, and it was pitch black. And all of a sudden, he screams out, Stop the car! And uh, so we, the, his buddy stopped. And you know, when you're going about 60 miles an hour, how long it takes to stop. It, you, you, there's, oh, yeah. He got out and he ran a long way back. And weirdly, he comes back with this crucifix. The, oh. And he said he found, that he said he saw hanging on one of those uh, um, posts with the reflector light. That's what he said. Hmm. Okay. And I just got the weirdest feeling, and he gave it to me. I got the weirdest feeling. Totally weird. Kind of like, like uh, I, they put at those memorials at a site where somebody's been well, hit by a car or had an accident. Yeah, but I don't know how he saw it. It was pitch black. We were going 60 miles an hour down a winding road. And uh, then uh, things got really weird. He uh, broke up with them. He wanted to kill me. He tried to commit suicide. He ended up in the mental hospital. Then he broke out of the mental hospital and tried to come for me and they got him back in he was in there for quite a while and then I really uh, lost track but it was like uh, he kidnapped me one time and my cousin and uh, scared everybody uh, I got myself out of that mess but that was like the first weird thing um, wow so yeah it was very weird so it was and, a really weird time and it all started with that crucifix yes and then the next thing happened when I was 15 I was with my brother it was just before he had been 17 so I just broke up with that guy, and I was just starting to go out with, you know, other people. My brother and I are two years apart, so we knew similar people, but we didn't really hang out together. So he got home, 
around uh, oh, I think it's around you know one ish or so, and and I was of course late as usual, so I was supposed to be home at midnight, but I got home about the same time. We we're just sitting, kind of talking about what we had done, and and this is the weirdest thing. Um, well, I have no explanation for it. My mom and dad were sleeping, and my little brother and my brother and I heard three really loud organ notes in three notes. We don't even have a piano in the place. We just looked at each other in shock. I thought it was coming towards my mom and dad's bedroom, and he thought it was coming from our basement. So he ran to the basement where our two bedrooms were, and I ran uh, to my mom and dad's room, and we heard it again. And this time, I go running because I thought it was downstairs. He thought it was where I was. And we almost bumped into each other, and then we heard it one more time. And there's been never an ex- explanation. It didn't look up my mom or my little brother or my dad. So but It was so loud, I can't even tell you how loud it was. So it was, it was deep organ, like church organ notes. Now, was there was there an organ in the house? No, not even. A piano, no. Wow. Okay. Well, you know, it's like we're like, weird. What the? Oh, you're 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 cutting. Um, I don't know if it's cutting in or out. It's like your phone gets muffled. Uh, oh. Yeah. Uh, no. That's no big deal. That's the bad thing about a cell phone. <laughs> cell phones can be pains, eh? Yeah. Isn't that the truth? Okay. Um, I'm gonna try again. Is that better? Oh yeah, that's much but much better. It's just okay, I'm yeah. Okay, gonna keep it here. Okay, so, so yep, go on, go on. And then after that, that's about when things got really strange. Um, one day I was uh, before our rentals, I was at the kitchen sink and I was doing dishes, and the uh, front door was uh, just directly to my um, left. Um, and it would be through the kitchen entrance where you kind of, you go straight down to where the, the front door would be. And I could see the front door where I did dishes. And I felt like something was looking, you know, somebody was looking. I felt like I was being watched. So I turned my head and there's nothing, of course. I do dishes and think, yeah, whatever. And I think something's looking at me. So I look again, nothing. And this time I thought I'm going to fake it out. So I kind of acted like I was going to turn, didn't, and then turned. And I saw this something squished against the the window, it looks sort of like leathery and black, ape-like or whatever. I screamed blue murder. My mom and dad and little brother were in the living living room, and they jumped up, and dad ran and looked at the door. It's nothing. They just said that I was, like, imagining it, that I know I saw something, and it was terrifying. It was black, hairy-looking, leathery-looking. That's mm-hmm. all I can say. It, it actually stopped my heart. But nobody took me serious, so it was like, boy, that was weird. Now, did, would you, uh, did you happen to lock eyes with the, uh, with the creature? That's an interesting question. I think I did. Um, now, I mean, uh, uh, did you get a sense of, you know, intelligence or, you know, any, any, yes, any intention whatsoever from it? I, I got a sense of intelligence and I got a sense of not good, bad, evil, horrible. And I was trying to describe it, eh? And then we'd get incidences that would happen of, uh, like, big boulders being, like, big boulders, but the big, bigger than a uh, basketball would be thrown at the door, and Dad go, what the hell? And he'd open the door, there'd be nothing there, and nobody around, which was re- weird. You know, my, and, I, and my parents would just kind of, like, poo-poo everything away like it was nothing. And I was just like, what's going on with them? Why don't they know that there's something weird? And, of course, my mom and dad said I was just being an over-imagined 15-year-old, eh? No. And, uh, but I knew something was odd the day I was sitting in the living room with my mom, and the philodendron plants started shaking and hissing, and I thought it was a cat, like a cat got in and started a fight or something. But my Siamese Jade was there, no problem. And I says, what's that? To my mom and you know, she said, oh, maybe the plant's thirsty. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. And I'm like, what? You know, like, but it, she was just totally oblivious. She just would not. And then, then I found out the house had a history. When, when we, I found this out later, but when we moved, Dad said he bought the house, but we couldn't go into it till he fixed it. He was going to do some remodeling, and we just want to take a look. And he goes, no, 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 you're not. And he absolutely wouldn't let us go. And I said, why? And he says, well, it's, it's pretty damaged. He said, and I don't want you to get the wrong impression. He says, uh, this old French woman, she was elderly, and she was selling it. He said he got a really good deal. And the reason she was selling it, he said, was that she, he, she, she kept on getting midnight moves and not getting her rent, and it was more trouble than it was worth. Anyway... When we did go there, it was painted and everything. And uh, there was about six bedrooms in the basement, all with locks on the outside. And I asked about that, and Dad said, well, at some point in that house's career, there's the North Battleford Mental um, 
institution, some of those big ones with the grounds and everything. And yeah. uh, they said there was for outpatients, but it, it had gone through like many different renters. Eh? And uh, but when later, when I was an adult and I had moved to Saskatoon, Dad said the reason he got a good deal on that place was because there was, it was just trashed inside satanic symbols and swear words and wow. all sorts of stuff. It was just absolutely bizarre. And he didn't want to scare us, so he wouldn't tell us. <laughs> I, I think I'd have uh, reservations about buying a house that, <laughs> that had that kind well, of... My a... dad, he was a pretty pragmatic fellow. You know, that kind of thing would just... It just uh, no way, you know. So, so, so uh, uh, just a quick question there. Uh, going back mm-hmm. to your, uh, you know, the the creature, the, the hairy creature mm-hmm. that you saw in the window, did it mm-hmm. give you any impression of something similar to like a Sasquatch or was it completely well, different? You know, it kind of, kind of, that was about the closest thing that I could um, compare it to. What now was the facial features like, a, like, you know, like a monkey almost, or was it like, you know, cause you said it you had know, a, a, a leathery, leathery face. Okay. Yeah. With like lots of hair and a leathery face. And remember it was squished against the window pane a bit. Okay. And his eyes look close together. Okay. So, I mean, if, for all intents and purposes, I mean, it, it doesn't, you know, I mean, the fur, if the fur is similar and stuff like that, but I mean, the, the, the I guess the facial features, I mean, uh, that would be something. I don't think for sure it was not a, a Sasquatch. Like, I never had that feeling for a second that it was a Sasquatch. Okay. I didn't know what the heck it was. But I have to ask if good. you noticed any uh, if you had, if you noticed any uh, particular smells uh, when the creature uh, uh, appeared that day. Mm-mm, no, but my little brother. Um, first of all, when he was um, when I was fifteen, he's about just about seven years younger than me, and him and his little friend were playing on a Saturday afternoon down in the basement where the family room um, later became. But um, it had. Um, just our bedrooms. Well, I think I, I don't think I was there yet. I think I was still upstairs um, bedroom. And my brother had the downstairs one, and then the one that became mine later was an office for Dad. He got income tax deduction for having an office, so he put up an office there. And my little brother and his friend come running upstairs and says, guess what we saw? And I said, what? They saw this uh, round ball about the size, they said, of a um, smaller than a basketball, but not much. I'm trying to think of a, a ball, but, you know, but it was large-ish, and it was green, they said, with black smears in it. That's what he said, he, and he would have been, if I was 15, he would have been around uh, 8, okay? Okay. Um, and they weren't afraid of it at all. They said they saw it come out of Barry's bedroom, float by the furnace, and go into the other bedroom. And I didn't want to scare him, but up like that freaked me out. And I just said, oh, that was, you know, oh, how strange. Wow. Eh? <laughs> and uh, I asked questions. I said, could you see through it? And he says, well, not really, but kind of, which made me think that it must have been like opaque or something. Yeah. You know, must have had like, yeah, but it was like, you know, so it wasn't solid, solid, but it was a ball and it, and it kind of floated, they said, from one room into the other. And that really scared me. Oh, I, I, I would imagine. <laughs> I would imagine I it would. Saw. But later, that room was, comes into play, um, and when by the time my little brother was about nine or ten, he uh, was terrified at the basement. Mom would send him down to get something from the freezer, and he would just feel like something was watching him, and, and then he would smell, and I only smelt it a couple times, but he smelt it all the time. It was like sickly, sickly sweet chocolate is the way he described it. Hmm. And then th- he would take Jade, pardon me? Oh, no, 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 go on, sorry. Oh, and then he would, uh, to give him company, he tried taking Jade or Siamese down with him, who was a real love bug, like, you know, he was a gentle, gentle cat, and he would go ape shit. He would just claw uh, Dean to get rid of, you know, like, be, not be carried and go upstairs. He'd just go, like, crazy. And uh, when I did eventually move down to that bedroom, and I don't know why I did, I guess maybe I just want to get away from, you know, parents at that age. Um, he quit coming to my room to sleep with me, which he always did before when I was upstairs. Eh? Yeah, I, I always found it interesting how animals seem to know, you know, uh, that there's something wrong. I mean, it, way before mm-hmm. people do. I mean, I watch my cat all the time, and he, he, you know, he's following things with his eyes all the time around the room and meowing at it and pawing at it. 
mm-hmm. and I can never see it, but <laughs> no, my cat would do that too. <laughs> would you say and that Jade the uh, that the orb mm-hmm. was some somewhere in between like a softball and a basketball in size? Uh, yeah, it would be bigger than a. It was kind of the size of a kid's soccer ball. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of interesting because kind of- it, it kind of kind of reminds me of uh, the descriptions of the orbs from the Skinwalker Ranch, and I'm not sure, but mm-hmm. I seem to remember uh, some kind of odor being uh, associated with the uh, uh, with their appearance, and that they would really? definitely have an effect on uh, um, uh, on the owner of the ranch. Uh, uh, it would it affect his his animals would uh, you know w- would definitely react to it. So. Um, I just I, I find it interesting the parallels between um, the appearance of, well, of colorful orbs and uh, mm-hmm. strange beings. Uh, and uh, please, the other thing can, about that, when I moved into my brother's bedroom when he got married at eighteen, and then I would have been seventeen or sixteen, sorry, because we're two years apart. Um, I don't know why I wanted to go into his that room, but I just did, and I can't explain it. But that's when I would get like that heavy shadow that would sometimes I'd kind of see it. It was blacker than the black, and a basement room gets pretty black. But I would suddenly see this blacker blackness against the wall, and it would kind of come up and over me, over my bed, and I would just freeze in fear, and I would just like say a prayer with my eyes shut till I fell asleep. Now, did it ever? Did it have a, a a shape of any kind, or was it just like a, a a mist? Well, it was more like a mist than a blob. But you know what? I wouldn't look at it. I would just shut my eyes, like, I, I, and I couldn't, I couldn't get up to run or anything because I thought if I did, like, it, something would happen. That's interesting. Uh, I I feel like I, I I've heard of many stories now. Uh, Ryan, you use your brain too. Um, I feel, <laughs> I, I, well, I, I guess the, uh, 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 the 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 most pertinent question was or is: uh, Do you feel that the uh, that the prayer uh, had any effect on it? I'm not sure. It just made me feel better. You know, I know that it made me oh, feel better. So I could, uh get my head not thinking about it. I think I knew I shouldn't think about it. See, to I me, just had an instinct that I shouldn't think about it. I've heard of uh, like a black mist, like like kind of like how you're describing, uh, almost be like a, a a manifestation of negative thought forms. Um, that That's, that would. I definitely got that feeling. Yeah, like it, it was bad. Well, and especially like it, you know, it it, it occurs. Um, you know, in homes with, uh, uh, you know, teenagers, because, of course, their hormones and, and you know, all this emotion and stuff like that, it, it, mm-hmm. you, it provides this very uh, um, charged... Rich feeding ground. Yes. And, mm-hmm. and, and so, I mean, and that's where I've read of these, uh, these you know, similar cases before, um, which I find interesting, um, you know, given that you guys were teenagers as well at the time. Um mm-hmm. Hmm. And then it makes me I think. The same. Yeah, and it makes me think that if, if you know, if this possibly could have been a trigger uh, for the other things that have that you know, of course, we'll get to. Um, yeah, and remember, like my brother's his personality changed, and he was in that bedroom from uh, the time we moved in when I was thirteen, and he was fifteen until he was like eighteen, and his personality changed. Like I cannot even tell you, he just withdrew he was angry mad all the time nobody knew and i know it really upset my my parents they put it to that um you know he had to leave uh you know his neighborhood and the city that he was in from birth um when dad got transferred at the worst time he could for a kid which is you know around 14 eh? yeah and they 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 chalked it up to that but he did get into a lot of drugs during that time okay now was uh, it heavy drugs with lsd Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now I, I'm not familiar with. Uh, uh, yeah, I just know that his personality changed. And he started acting different than he always did, and, you know. Yeah. But when he moved away, straightened right up. He still married today, the same woman. So how interesting, kind of the uh, Amityville uh, uh, or the Amity House uh, um, <laughs> of syndrome Bad vibe where- thing. Yeah. yeah, you know, with the change in personality, like a darkness falls over the person. Yeah, just to by be honest, being in I was proximity. Of him. Oh, really? And I was afraid of him. Yeah, I was afraid of him. I just withdrew from him totally, um, and we were pretty close before that. But he just got like he scared me. 
you just scared me. Well, it, it makes you wonder if there if there was something in there that has some kind of an influence. Uh, I don't know. You know, like 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 you know, and again, if we're talking about negative energy and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and and of course that's all uh, speculation because. Um, you know, really, I guess only he would know if there was uh, something more than that. But I guess being family, I mean, you you'd probably have a good idea of any anything going on in his life. And uh, if, if well, yeah, it, just that during that time he was a stranger to me, and it kind of changed our relationship forever. Though you know, later in our old age, we've you know gotten a little closer, but it definitely um, made a, a difference in our relationship. Our whole family seemed to just kind of go funny after living in that house, and I mean that. Um, it was very weird. And um, when it, things really got strange was around that first sighting of those um, monkey paw things, my um, mom and dad and my little brother and my brother and his wife and some other relatives went to uh, take a houseboat tour through the Grand Canyon, and I didn't want to go. Um, I, just didn't, I was just in this rebellious stage and just didn't want to go. So when I used that I was working at the A&W, but I couldn't leave work. And um, so I had a few girlfriends stay with me. And uh, when they would pick me up at midnight to, you know, go back, there would be, like, all the lights in the house on and the doors open. And I'd say, hey, you guys, like, you know, my dad will kill me if the power's crazy. He's a nut about it. Yeah. Um, like, you know, you got to like shut the lock the doors and drop lights. And they said, they said they did. And I just didn't believe them. And then the next time they picked me up, it was the same thing. And finally they said, listen, we shut everything. And it got so bad. And this is, I find even weirder in retrospect. It got so bad that they wouldn't stay there unless I was there. And I find that funny. Why would they stay there? And, you know, I could think about it later. Why would they stay there when I was there? <laughs> yeah. Well, it doesn't make sense. No. And, and you know, I, 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 I really want to, to jump into the monkey paw thing here now because we're, mm -hmm. we're after reference it a couple times and, and I'm sure people are going to wonder, well, what, what's with the monkey paw? So, uh, okay, I can jump into that. Um, we started hearing while we were there, uh, doorknobs rattling, footsteps coming up the door. We phoned the police so many times we got a warning not to phone the police anymore. We're going to be in trouble. <laughs> they thought we were just Pranks pranking us. or something. Yeah, And so... Um, we were sitting around, um, and it was not even late. Um, every time I saw this sighting, it was usually late summer, early evening, early early evening, late afternoon, so it wasn't dark or anything. And we are sitting around the kitchen, and it was everybody was both occasions, the two, two years later, same situation, sitting around that kitchen table, just talking, not about anything scary, it's just an ordinary day. And all of a sudden, that crack between the door and the floor... Now, this was the door that, that went uh, led down to the basement floor where your bedroom yeah. was. Okay. That's right. Where the two bedrooms were, and there was kind of a, uh, we had a ping pong table in this one big room that eventually got made into, the whole downstairs got made into a family room eventually. But it was kind of like pretty bare and grim looking, actually, at that point. Okay. And how much and of a uh, gap are we looking at in the door here? Like an I inch? Would say, I would say it was about an inch. And um, the... Uh, size of the bone structure of these things was about what I would, I've never really seen a monkey, a uh, spider monkey, but I'm thinking about that kind of like a cat, you know, a paw, the sturdy cat, you know, that, that, that bone structure, but it was like the forearms. So I, you'd see just the forearms reaching under, there was at least two creatures, but it moved so fast and furious. There could be three, but I, I sort of think there was just two because their arms would cross over each other and stuff while they're doing it. And it was aggressive. They'd be like scratching the floor. And, you know, when you mentioned that it was like they're trying to get us, I didn't get that feeling that they're trying to get us more than they were just trying to, it was trying to freak the person out. Okay. So like I didn't feel that they were trying to get under the door or reach for anybody. So there there, there were three of you at the time. And uh, there was four of us, four three girlfriends and myself. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so and they start screaming. Instant so screaming. What's that? <laughs> so paint the, paint the picture for us now. So you're you're sitting down on the couch or uh, uh, in the living room in the kitchen in the, in the kitchen, kitchen sorry. right by the, the the kitchen table. Kind of uh, the the one chair would be face almost the door. Hey, if you're sitting at the kitchen table, okay, the, the furthest one on the north side of the kitchen would almost face the kitchen table. So somebody was there sitting there, and the others were around. There smoke like steam engines back there. Everybody did. So we're smoking and talking and whatever. And all of a sudden, this scrabbling starts. 
And they say, they just start screaming, what's that? You know, screaming, what's that? What's that? And I get up and I look and I have no idea. And so I said, oh, I, it's probably the cat. It's just the cat. You know, I would always say that because he was Siamese. He had sort of the same color. So I knew darn well it wasn't a cat. It, they had, it was like small hands, jointed fingers with black claws, or not claws, like nails. You know, they were like, like they had like fingernails. Okay. And they were black. And uh, kind of leathery on the bottom. I Later, uh, I saw it when I was at the zoo, I saw raccoons. They were similar to that, but different, like blacker, longer fingers. Hard to describe, but are you getting any visual from that? Oh, oh yeah. Like, Certainly. like when I when I first read the story, uh, you know, mm-hmm. I, I didn't... Um, like, I, I, first thing that jumped in my head was, like, Sasquatch or something like that. But then when I reread it, and you said it was really small hands, and I'm thinking... It's small, yeah. And, I, and I'm thinking uh, under the door frame, and, and, and that's why mm-hmm. Ryan asked you, because, um, you know, I, I'm thinking of how small the gap under the door, or how big well, it would have to be. That door was one inch. Dad later replaced that door. Um, after 72, uh, 1974, they did Reno's, and but at that time, it had a good inch... So, were there any yeah. noises like like the noises like an animal's calls or or, or you know screeching or any or or no. was it just the violent scrabbling of these little violent furry scratching. hands? Violent scratching, yeah. And it was like a flurry, like shh, shh, shh. it was just uh, very very loud, very loud, and um, it inciting. Like you know, it it was just like it, it made everybody just jump, and you you didn't know what the heck to do. You didn't know what it was, and. Uh, I got. I just knew I had to calm everybody down, so I just grabbed the door. Took every ounce of courage I've ever had to do this, and I whipped the door open, and there was absolutely nothing there. There's nothing. So you you mentioned that uh, I believe the forearms got underneath the door as well. Yeah, you could. It would be like you know from about where the elbow you could imagine an elbow being, you know, on the other side. So you didn't see everything. We were seeing everything from the elbow down. So you couldn't see the elbow, if it had one. <laughs> so we're you talking... You see the forearm. So these are very Pardon? small creatures we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I got like impish. Impulse came to mind when I when I think back on it. They're like imps. That's oh, okay. Now, were, were the arms themselves covered in hair? Yes. And it wasn't fur so much as to me it looked like hair. Longer. Okay. Coarser. Okay. Yeah. Uh Okay, so we got a small creature. Their their arms, their hands are covered in hair. Their nails uh, look human, and they're yeah. scrabbling. So now, of Any course, physical damage on the door or the floor on the door frame. No. Now the, and the floor wouldn't they just kind of? It'd be like you know if a cat was reaching over under and scratching all wildly. Okay. It'd be like that, and they wouldn't leave a, any damage. But you, they make a lot of noise. But it was like more noise than I can even. So you you had this experience uh, twice. I I think it was nineteen seventy two mm-hmm. and nineteen seventy four. Right. Or okay. So was the second time any different, or 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 just set set so the scene? Almost, interestingly, oh. it was almost absolutely identical. Okay. Except so, I had uh, four cousins with me and myself. There's five of us this time. So, and and both times, of course, you, you walk up to the door, and uh, you're mm-hmm. the one to open it, which mm-hmm. must have been terrifying, by the way. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, Especially seeing it twice, eh? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, uh, since you had to, you know, kind of like a posse there with you, I mean, did, did either of you uh, venture down after it to see if you could find what it was, or was it just, you know... Uh, well, I, not... I did the second time. Okay. So... I, I had my... Uh, I had my, my little brother who, when I was uh, 19, he would have been like 12, eh? So okay. he, he wanted to go look. And then, you know, um, and another male cousin who was about a year younger than him. They, and so I went, and we kind of took a look around, and there was nothing. We never ever, had, like I had a dog, too, and a cat that lived there. And, uh, you know, the dog and cat would have reacted if something was there. Like so, if it was animals, you know what I mean? Yeah. No scats, yeah, certainly. no damage. Like, I've seen what raccoons have done at the at the lake. I saw the raccoons out in this guy's house and, and, or cottage, and they just destroy it. So, I, uh, did you ever find any, uh, uh, 
Well, I guess you just answered that. There, I mean, there was no physical uh, uh, implications that anything had been anywhere. No. So, I mean, uh, and, and the, the interesting. Well, I have to ask now. When you walk, when you walked up to the door, um, did the arms withdraw as you got close to the door, or were they scrabbling right up until you opened the door? And then it's like were... you open the door, their arms disappeared because the door, of course, passed them, and then there was mm-hmm. just nothing there. Like there would have been well, no time for anything to even run away. No time at all. Like I would go up, and I wouldn't uh, walk right. Like I'd reach the door. Like I, as long as my long arm would go, I grab the door. And I just jerk it open, and it would be scrabbling right till till then. And I've got long arms, and so you know, I'm looking right now at me doing it. There's probably a good, good three and a half feet that I could, because I did not want to get close to whatever is there. And so I kind of got went up, Sorry. and I pulled the door, and then looked, and there's nothing, and it was scrabbling right up then. And meanwhile, you have to realize that the first time there's like three girls that are screaming blue murder. <laughs> so there's scrabbling and screaming going on. It was very, very like wild. And then there was nothing. And, and then you they just felt you had to take that, control of the situation. Yeah. And, you know, at the same time, uh, we were hearing, I was hearing my name called down the basement a lot. I thought mom was calling me during this time. And she wasn't. And if my girlfriends were staying overnight and stuff, they would yell up. They would hear their names. And I started hearing whispering. That's um, that's creepy. So, I mean. Uh, it's very creepy. It was, it was, I felt like I was being summoned. tormented, haunted, kind of. That's what I felt. So... Okay, so you're at this time. Is your bedroom still down in the basement? Like, well, yeah, I moved my bedroom downstairs when I was sixteen, and uh, or fifteen, somewhere around, around just before I was sixteen, and then I didn't like. And my brother moved out, get married, and I moved into his room. I did not like that bedroom that I moved into. Uh, the orb came out of my brother's bedroom, but went into the one that was. It was mine for a while, and that was always a cold bedroom, and I didn't like it. My mom painted it uh, for the 70s, uh, what a color I wanted. I wanted pink with hot pink trim and everything, so she <laughs> did that for me. Yeah. It was really, you know, a girl's room, and the other one was very plain in a guy's room, but I, I just didn't like that bedroom, so when my brother moved out, I moved into the one next to him. Okay. And stayed there till I left home, yeah. So, I mean, the, the interesting thing about this, I guess, uh, is that, you know, there, there was never any physical, uh, you know, uh, uh, things, you know, imprints that it, it was a physical thing. And you got all this racket and, and noise from from a scrabbling. I mean, you got like uh, four four people witnessing at the, at the same time you, you open the door mm-hmm. there's nothing there and i found it interesting that you would you would call it or, or refer to it almost as an imp because now thinking about it i mean you had a, a satanic symbols and and uh, all, all kinds of stuff like obviously there had been cult rituals and stuff like that done in there something going on and you know i didn't know that at the time i didn't find this out until i was like 25 or so Closer, you know, between twenty five and thirty, when my dad told us. Okay, because the whole thing would would uh, cer- it certainly sounds more into the uh, uh, I guess ethereal realm rather than a physical realm, because there's no physical imprints and stuff like that. So well, the only weird physical thing that ever happened, my dad pointed out to me, and this was in the winter. One day, Dad uh, comes to me and says, "Hey, come outside and look at this. It's really weird." And I went out. And there was these weird footsteps, um, little creature footsteps, that like two, just two, like one, and then quite a di- distance away, another one, small. Um, now, now and can you- in the snow, and they uh, kind of went up and around, um, up the side of the of the garage, kind of, and uh, between the garage and the neighbor's fence, and just disappeared. And my dad mean- showed me. Do you mean like a straight line, like it, like it, it walks straight up over the fence and down again? Yeah, and and like they started out of nowhere. There was fresh snow, and they just started, and then they just ended with nothing. And they kind of went, um, they went across to the neighbor's fence, and they went by the neighbors right up to it. You could see it on on the fence, and then it went up the, uh, the side of the garage, and de- and then down again and around. Wow. Now, you know what that brings to my mind? I don't know if you've they, ever... They weren't cloven footprints, were they? You know, I would like to say that I know I knew that, but 
they were odd and it was, the snow was deep, but I, to me, I, it, it looked like there might've been like a, um, dad thought it might be like a bird because it had like two, you know what I mean? Well, two, two like, like a, um, a cleft, you know what I mean? Like dad thought it was like maybe a bird of some kind that did it, but it was too big and it was just two lines. It was weird. And my dad points that out and I says, what do you think that is? And he said, I don't know. I've never seen anything like that before. And it was just forgotten, like everything was around there. Were but the it was like uh, one in front of the other by any chance? Yes, absolutely. It looked like as if, let's say that I made something with a stick and I had a funny little foot in the bottom of the stick. It'd be like if I poked it there and then just went straight up, poked it, and poked it. They were like that straight. You know what I mean? Like just no other, just one and then another one. Not you like know, most animals have the two kind of steps. You know That's what? That's very, very interesting. Yeah, you, you know where I, well, you know where I'm going with this, don't you? Uh, uh, yeah, well, the, I, the the story from London uh, one winter where a, uh, a a series of cloven footprints were discovered all across the city. Oh, I thought a, that uh, was Sicily. Uh, oh, uh, it, actually, yes, you're right. It was uh, Sicily. You mean, yeah, is that si- similar to that New Jersey Devil thing years ago? I you know, I don't or something. I don't think so. This is basically what happened, and this was in the news, right? Like it, it was mm-hmm. a really bizarre story. But uh, over in Sicily, uh, one day anyway, like everybody's electronics started catching on fire. Like uh, even if it wasn't plugged in, like everybody got up one day and was like, you know, oh. what, what the hell, right? And then they discovered that there was these footprints, cloven hoof footprints, that walked in a straight line. Like, all through the whole city, like, up over buildings, over fences, over houses, just in one straight line. And um, it's really bizarre because, I mean, even if you had a prankster that could do that, I mean, can you imagine how hard it would be to do, you know, to get that, yeah, to get that consistently in a straight line over a whole place like that. And then, you know, again, like, people's electronics, like, all over the city, uh, whether plugged in or not, catching on fire. I mean, it was just so bizarre. And of course, that is extreme. yeah. And now, I mean, I know it, it, it's a little different, but I mean, we're we're still talking footprints that went in a mm-hmm. in a straight line up over a fence, and you know, mm-hmm. that, that, <laughs> it's pretty weird and stuff. And it was uh, never seen again. And uh, my dad saw it, and uh, you know, I just can't, I want to take pictures, and we didn't have any uh, anything to take pictures, and it was gone. But it was also like there was. Um, Oh, I don't know. This sounds weird, but they ended up with a big pair of boots in our house that nobody knew how they got there when uh, we came back from a visit in Saskatoon. We come back, and there's this big pair of boots, and I kept saying, well, who's are there? Who's are they? And my mom goes, oh, I don't know. Something, you know, that was an only other physical type thing. Yeah. Well, now, but, oh, sorry, go on. And just the doorknob rattling was common. Yeah, doorknobs uh, rattling. You know, I have to ask: Was there ever a police report filed uh, uh, about the incident? Like, did they ever take a take your statements and fill out a report? Oh, I imagine there would be, um, because they, we had, you know, police. There, there would be something on the phone. I'm sure a cop came uh, at least once. So, if I, you know, inquired about 1972, because um, that would be around that time, it'd be the summer of 1972 when we uh, phoned. Um, I'm sure there'd be something because they they got mad at us and told us we'd be in trouble if we phoned anymore. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> so I mean, you mentioned that uh, you know these creatures, of course, the ones that that were reaching under the door. By the way, it, you know, you're talking mm-hmm. s- small footprints. I, I'm kind of thinking that that might be that creature again that uh, possibly walked up over that fence. But anyway, you, you mentioned. Uh, that those creatures somehow felt wrong, that they had an evil presence. Uh, can you yeah. el- elaborate on that? Well, because I could, even when I was looking at them, I knew that they really weren't a, a, a monkey. I knew that. Like there's, there's no monkeys in, in North Battleford, but also um, they just didn't look like 100% like a monkey. It's just the closest thing I could come to you know, when I was trying to put some kind of logical reference in my head. And um, it just, the way that they were scrabbling, they were trying to cause fear. 
Okay. And like I said, not trying to get anybody. They were just they were just trying to cause fear. Is all I can think of. Well, you it, know, it seems almost um, so, like why would they do it? They you know why wouldn't they just like attack you? You know what I mean? Like when you're downstairs or something. Well, well That's you know, what I thought was weird about it. I, I think part of, of an imp is, is that they're pranksters. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Ryan. I know that uh, you're uh, you're pretty familiar. Well, I, I guess in the you know in the the mythology, the popular popular lore that yeah that imps are a you know a a, a, a demonic trickster force uh, type entity that you know likes to, to to play pranks to scare and and confuse mm-hmm. and you know sometimes cause you know physical injury. Yeah. Yeah, and, well, you and know, sorry, go on. Well, that second sighting in 1974, one other weird thing happened with the same group of people within uh, a week, in, within the same week. Um, um, my son was uh, just a newborn then. I was 19, and I uh, was making formula for the next day, and I had to make it out of powder and stuff and put it in bottles and stuff. And I put it into the fridge, and we saw the old fridge. It was 1974. Um, four, still the old fridge, that was big rounded ones that weigh about 200 pounds, you know? <laughs> yeah. You guys are young, so you might not remember them. They're big and heavy and rounded, old-fashioned ones, and they had a handle that you pull out. It was a like silver... A, a latch chrome handle. Bucket. Yeah, latch handle, exactly. And I put the formula, formula in the fridge, and I'm just walking away, and the whole fridge starts jumping up and down, like literally... It's jumping up and down, and that handle is just opening and shutting, opening and shutting, and the kids just go screaming. They're just, what's happening? And again, I went over, and I just grabbed the handle, opened it, and there's nothing there. But I had to do something because the kids were just screaming. And there were four of them, my little brother and three cousins, and they were all between the ages of 12 and about eight or nine. Okay. Uh, And it only did that once, ever. So I almost like a poltergeist uh, like activity. That's that's pretty. That's a pretty violent uh, a poltergeist. Though I, I I don't know if I've heard of things like fridges uh, uh, being tossed about a room. That's pretty well or jumping up and down. How high would you say it would yeah, jump? Well, I would say that it would jump like an inch or so, inch and a half. Like so, you could visibly see this heavy big fridge. They were they were big heavy fridges. You could physically see it going up and down. Yeah, I could, I could see rock the whole house. Well, that, that's it was what I was thinking. Loud. And yeah. then the handle just on its own, just going back and forth. And those handles don't um, go back and forth; like they have no mechanism to make it just go that way. You have to manually open it by pulling that latch type, you know, handle. You pulled it forward towards you, and it was about six inches long, maybe eight. And you, you know, pull it forward and unlatch the door, and then you shut it. You know. So it didn't really have a mechanism meant for it to be going back and forth like that. And I just I just told the kids, I, well, maybe it's just electrical short. I had to say something. And they didn't believe me. None of them believed me. But, you know, that's what I found out, that when you see things that are really weird and you can't put any logic to them, then your brain just wants to just, oh, well, you know, push it away kind of. Because you just, like maybe, like, like what maybe are you the do? plant is thirsty. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like the plant was thirsty. You know, that was that was very strange. And then there was a lot of like uh thumpings at the door, like, like that big rock that one time and other thumpings and stuff, eh? And I'd uh I'd hear like somebody coming up to the back door and the front door. But we you know, had a weird interesting church because we have, we have from monkey us as well. like uh, we have monkey-like creatures, and uh, rock throwing is uh, a, a typically something associated with the uh, the Bigfoot phenomenon, whatever Bigfoot is. Uh, really? People sometimes, I never knew that. Yeah, yeah. They, well, you know hmm. what? What I'm interested in, I, I gotta ask now. Uh, mm-hmm. You you mentioned that you guys, you know, played around with Ouija boards and stuff like that. I mean, it is pretty typical for. I mean, all of us that's uh, ever been interested in anything paranormal is is. Uh, you know, played with things like that. Now, mm-hmm. but did you play with these things and then the activity started or was the activity already there? I think, well, other than what my dad told us years later that I didn't know about, um, I think we were, I was, I think we were playing with it before it started. So, I mean, it's possible that you, you may have just opened the door 
to uh, to to something that without even realizing it, it, now when you had these experiences with the Ouija board, you know, I mean, did you ever make contact with something that, uh, you know, ha- have any experience where it's like, you know, something you felt something was communicating with you or anything like that? Well, the Ouija board would always go crazy for me. And my friends would always say that um, I was moving up, but I wasn't it scared me. Yeah. Um, and we had like, we had other, you know, many, and I also had like a bad feel when I played with the Ouija boards, like that I shouldn't be doing it. Yeah. But, you know, and then like we were doing like, you know, spells, love spells are really good back then when you're 15 and 16 doing love spells and things like that. But, you know, when I, and I did like, I'm, a, I'm a, uh, a quite a reader, read a lot. And I was uh, getting all these books on um, uh, the occult. And I was reading, and I remember when I was reading it all, about demonology and all this other stuff, I kept saying to myself, I could not do all these things that they want you to do. You know what I mean? I Be- thought, God, I couldn't do that. But I know that I wanted power. I, I remember that was really, I felt powerless in my teenage life then. And I, I know that I really wanted power. Yeah. But, you know, if I just feel like what was telling me to do what I was doing. I wanted power. I wanted, like, control. That's the ironic thing is that a lot of, you know, I mean, there's a common theme for when people get into magic and stuff like that or, or you know, mm-hmm. occult practices. It's like some form of control. I mean, you, you do a ritual to, to make something happen. But oftentimes, mm-hmm. it, by doing, by opening those doors, you actually lose control, which is... Because mm-hmm, later, that that would absolutely tell what was happening. Um, I had, like, when I um, moved to Edmonton shortly after... Um, my uh, graduation of high school in August to move to Edmonton, so I would have been 18. Yeah. And uh, that was like, and I think I was still haunted then. I'm, you know, as far as I could tell, there was still like weird stuff happening. Um, my girlfriend and I got this, um, went to Edmonton, and we looked in the paper, and we found this place. We had like hardly any money at all. This was in 1973. Okay. And... Uh, this gets really weird. We, we found this, uh, this place, we go to it, and we go down the basement, and there's, um, there's a little sitting room with a little room with two twin beds and a little tiny living room, and the other side of the stairway coming down the basement with a little tiny kitchen. Then there's a washer and dryer, and then there was a bathroom with just a shower and a sink and a toilet. Then there was a big bedroom. And then you would walk up towards the kitchen again, and then there's, a, like I said, a little sitting room. And right across the sitting room was a great big, fully furnished rumpus room. And uh, she said, you know, the rent was so much. And I said, well, or we both said, we can't afford that. We just can't. So sorry. She said, okay, well, you can have it. Um, if you just have the sitting room with the two twin beds, I said, and the kitchen and the bathroom, then you can have it for this much. And we said, sure, because it was well, get for it. Now, I'm not even lying. This sounds like this sounds like a, a made-up situation, but it's not. The little sitting room was totally decorated in black and orange. Had a black lacquer uh, bookcase kind of wall that's uh, and a curtain um, in orange. And okay. then you would go into the little bedroom and have the, the, like two little single beds. And then it was like that hog hide uh, fake uh, black leather chair and uh, orange walls like that kind of wood paneling that's really grained in wood and it was quite orange. So yep. the whole thing was in black and orange. And so when we got the key, uh, we were to move in at the end of the month. And they said, we're going to be away on holidays for about three weeks. So, you know, that's what we paid them. And then they'd be, they said, when you move in, we'll be gone for about three weeks, but we'll see when you get back, right? And they're very nice people. They seem really, really nice. Okay. So we moved in. And it was hard for us to find jobs. We never really had jobs other than my a and one. And um, we were, uh, my friend was getting, like, super, super homesick. And so there was a big storm outside. And I says, well, we had no money to go out or anything. We were getting broke. And I says, uh, why don't we just write letters to home? And, you know, that'll cheer us, you know, cheer you up. Because she was, like, getting kind of weepy. She would never left home before and stuff. Yeah. So writing letters. And there's this huge uh, thunderstorm going on. And... Um, all of a sudden, I don't know what, why I said this. I said, what would you do if the power went off? And she said, I'd freak right out. And uh, I'm not lying, but one second later, all the power went off. <laughs> and she's freaking and I'm freaking. So we lit one of those little 
owl candles that are very popular. It had a little candle holder with you light it up and had owl face and stuff, eh? And we lit that and I said, just keep writing, we'll just keep your mind off of stuff, eh? So we're just writing, we're writing, we're writing. My heart's beating because I'm scared. It was so black in there with, with no light, but the little light gave us something to do, you know, yeah. writing. And all of a sudden, I said, what would you do if somebody knocked at the door? Would you answer it? And she said, no freaking way. And I'm not kidding you. About two seconds later, somebody knocks at the door. And we go running in the kitchen. We're grabbing knives. We're just freaking out. We don't know what to do. Yeah. And we're at the bottom of the stairs. All of a sudden, the door burst open. And there's this blonde chick there. And she says to me, and to Rochelle, she says, don't let the vampires bite you. And she walks upstairs into the house. Wow. So, and, so the lights, and the lights came on. So this, a stranger walked into your house? Well, like, we're in the basement suite, eh? Of oh, a, of okay. A house. Okay. And so she, and like, the door, we would go out, was, you know, we had to go up the stairs, and there's the back door, there's side door, back door, whatever, eh, of the house we rented in the basement suite. And she was at the that door that we used, that, they, that people also use, because there's a stair going down to the basement, and then a few steps up to the main house, eh? And she said, don't let the vampires bite you. And she went into... um. She went into the house and the lights came off on, I mean, back on. And we were just like so happy <laughs> that the lights came on. And we said like, who's that? And I don't know. And we just kind of forgot about it eh? because the lights were on. Everything was good. That, yeah, and then per- a couple of days, pardon me? No, no, go on. I was just going to say it's pretty bizarre, but. Uh, <laughs> it was. And it gets weirder. Okay, um, go on. Um, the base, the, in the basement there, there was a, that one big bedroom I mentioned just past the bathroom. Yeah, and that bedroom, that bedroom gave me absolute willies. I just, when I would walk into the bathroom, I'd have to go straight down the hall, and it was at the end of the hall, short hallway, and I would have to shut my eyes and not look and go in to use the washroom. I couldn't even look in that room. Something about that room scared me so bad I didn't know what to do. I never said anything because I didn't want to scare Rochelle. She was like very, she got scared of stuff easy, eh? and so I just, um, would just kind of shut my eyes and you know not look at that bedroom. And then Michelle one day says, you know, so I don't like that bedroom. And I said, really? And she said, yes, yeah. there's something weird about it. And I said, you know, I, I feel the same. And she says, let's keep that door shut. So we would shut the door, eh? But it would always seem to be open. And she said, she would say, are you, did you open that door? And I'd say, no, I didn't. She says, well, I didn't. <laughs> and I says, well, maybe it just springs open or whatever, eh? But this went on, like, the whole time that we lived there. Yeah. And, and now that girl comes. And we were having uh, supper in that little kitchen, and all of a sudden I hear "hello" or whatever. Like she's coming down the stairs, and she's got a bottle of wine. She says, "Yeah." She says, "I thought I'd get to know my neighbors." She said, and she, "Do you mind if I come in and have some wine?" I said, "No, you know." So we're sitting around the table, and she got some glasses, and she poured us some wine and stuff, and or we poured the wine, whoever, whatever. And uh, all of a sudden, you know what? I just know that that bedroom at the end of the hall was hers. Oh yeah, I just know it. Like, oh yeah, I just knew it, and it gets really weird. Can I swear on here? Because oh yeah, I yeah, yeah. She says, Go "Okay," because, anyways, we're talking. She says, "This is her story, and this is God's truth." She said that when she <clears> used, she said looked at me right in the eye weirdly, and she says, "You know that bedroom down at the end of the hall?" She says, "I used oh I left out something." I, just before she, this incident with her occurred, one day there was a sack about a day or two before she. So don't let the vampires bite. Yeah. There was a stack of Macintosh apples in that bedroom. As soon as I came home from job hunting, I walked in, I could smell apples. And apples are one of my favorite fruits on earth. Like, I must eat three apples a day. And Rochelle was still um, out pounding the pavement. And I came down, and I smelled apples, and I went right to that uh, room. The door was open. There was a burlap sack full of Macintosh apples. And I took them. <laughs> I still remember that. I thought I shouldn't, but I, I just thought, man, we haven't had fruit. I'm taking this apple. So I, I did take an apple. And when Rochelle came home later, I said, Rochelle, go look in the in the bedroom. She went there and she says, holy shit. She says, there's apples. She says, you didn't take one, did you? And I said, yes, I did. You shouldn't have taken the apples, she said. So anyways, that little part happened. And it was like 24 to 48 hours later, this girl's there. Now, she comes down the kitchen, she tells us that she used to, that used to be her bedroom, and that she ran away when she was about 16. She looked to me about 25. Okay. And uh, and we were like uh, uh, 17 and 18, so she looked pretty old for us at that time, eh? And uh, she was wearing 
one of those, um, I don't know if you guys are pretty young, but it was uh, jeans made into a jean skirt, a really hippie outfit. And okay. They go in a panel and they make it into a skirt, eh? Yeah. And she had long blonde hair and very hippie looking. And she said that um, she looks at me right in the face when she's talking about this room, too. And I just got this, this. I had two things that needed came. I, I, got, I froze inside. My innards froze. And something said, whatever you do, don't show fear. I remember that part. Okay. And so I just put the most casual look in my face. And uh, she, as she was talking, she told us that she ran away. She used to be, belong to Witchin's Coven, she said. And then they wanted her to sacrifice her dog that was pregnant, and she couldn't do it, so she ran away to B.C. This is her story, right? Okay. And she lived in the mountains and ironed with an iron with a frying pan. That sticks to my mind. That's how they'd iron their clothes and stuff. Kind of a commune, she said. Yeah. And um, then this is the weird part. She looks at me and says, when I was a kid, and she said, that used to be my bedroom. And she looks only at me. She ignores her shell. She looks at me. She says, when I was a kid, oh, I wrote that down. Kings, queens, devils, witches, and things used to come out of the closet and fuck me. Nice. That's what she said. Wow. And I just said, oh, and I, I like, and in my brain, my brain is kind of going, Wee! like, I'm totally terrified and in shock. But not, but I can't say really shock. I kind of expected to hear something weird, but still, it really bugged me. And I just kept the most bland look in my face, and I said, wow, that was kind of weird, eh? And uh, I don't remember much else. She left and, you know, whatever. And then Rochelle then talked about that. What the heck was that about, you know? And, and Rochelle says, I know, it's like, did you, I knew it was her room too. And I said, yeah, I did too. Like, it's weird. And we thought, well, whatever, you know, what do you do? But like, we didn't want her to come down anymore or anything. And we never, ever saw her again. And when her, um, that man and woman came back. Yeah. We said, your long-lost daughter was here to visit. And she says, what long-lost daughter? And she was really mad, eh? Yeah. And I said, yeah, the one that moved to, ran away and went to uh, BC. And uh, she left a bag of raffles that's in there. She says, I don't have a long-lost daughter. And she just stomps into her house, eh? Yeah. And so we're like, what the hell? And all of a sudden, they're not so nice anymore. We hear them fighting upstairs all the time and furniture being thrown around and and Rochelle says, we got to get out of here. She said, this place is just too weird. And so we were, you know, starting to look for something else because, like, it was just weird. Anyways, got the paper, and there was this job. And we had no more money. We are at our bottom dollar almost. And uh, I said, I'm going to ask them if I can use the phone because, you know, instead of go paying money and running around. And so I uh, knocked on the door, and she, I said, hey, I was just wondering if you use a phone. I'm, I'm applying for a job. And she says, come on in. And do you know what? There was not a stick of furniture in that entire house. Nothing. Wow. And yeah, that is I then, very interesting. Very, that's... And then I, I run downstairs, and I said, Rochelle, go use the phone. Go use the phone. Quick, why? She says, just go. Just go. Go use the phone. She comes down. She's white. She says, there's no furniture. I says, I know. And she says, what were we hearing getting thrown around up there? I said, I have no idea, but we are out of here. And we moved shortly after. Wow, that is really cool. I mean, I I could understand that being terrifying for you, but <laughs> but for me as it a was. for me as a listener, man, that that's really neat. Uh, Here's uh, another oh, weird I, thing I, about it. Go I on. I gotta uh, ask you, that, you to, to repeat that uh, that that phrase: kings, queens, devils, devils, witches, and things. Kings, queens, is, devils, witches, and things. And do you know what that I got a it that struck in my mind for. A long time, like why it had a, a ring of familiarity to me. It almost sounds and like then Disney. I remembered, <laughs> well, yeah, it, because I read a book when I was a kid. It was one of my favorite books ever, and it was um, the war, the wardrobe. The wardrobe. Oh, the uh, yes, the uh, the 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 witch, the lion, and the wardrobe. Is it? Yeah, yeah. I loved that book as a kid. And um, there, uh, the, something about what she said reminded me of something, and then I remembered it was that, that something about the wardrobe, and they had something like the, the line, the witch in the wardrobe, maybe just because she said witch in it, and the closet was one of those white louvered closet double, you know, that open up. Yeah. Because I used to see, yeah. And so something about that struck me, and uh, 
much later, yep. years well, later. Well, the actually. reason I got you to repeat is because I, you know, mm-hmm. it, it it rang familiar to me as well. I, I I I don't know if that's what it is because I never I never read the book. I I did see the movie, mm-hmm. um, but it does have a the, familiar the, ring, doesn't it? It does. It, it certainly does. You know what it sounds like to me, like well, what's jumping in my head uh, is ironically the uh, uh, the cartoon. Alice in Wonderland by Disney when the the walrus ate all those uh, all those clams or something like that and he was like you know we will speak of this this and other such things I can't remember but I had like a kind of like a flow like that or something yeah um, and she said it with that that kind of weird flow and she was just drilling me in the eyes too like it was it was freaky and the other weird thing was when we went to moved in and of course they're away in holidays for three weeks and then they weren't nice anymore when they came back. They never did lock that big um, rumpus room that was all furnished and everything. Yeah. They never locked it. We could go in there if one. That was both the iciest, coldest room. I don't know if because they had the dance off or whatever. That room was ice, ice cold, like just freezing cold. And um, so I That was the room with the uh, black and orange motif? No, that was our little room. Our little room was the black room. This was just a big family room, and it's totally furnished, like as if people were still living in there or, you know, using it. And, but it was ice cold. And when we'd have company, we had like, you know, people our age, young people coming in and they say, well, let's go sit in there. There's more room. And nobody would stay in that room for like two seconds. And I'd be all, Hey, we're not renting that room. Get out of there. I'd be all like nervous if they're in there anyhow. But now, they didn't you, like it because it was very cold. Now, can you imagine what you might've picked up? Had you been a fly on the wall up there when they were arguing? Uh, and they would swear at each other. Horrible swearing. <laughs> th- that is so bizarre. Uh, so I got to mm-hmm. ask as well, because you said that, uh, you know, you became haunted by something evil and that it followed you. So, I mean, you moved out to this place. Uh, uh, is this kind of what you were indicating? Like when you say something followed you? Like, um, oh, yeah. And I, it's like, I don't think that like an entity or something. I don't know, but it was like, we were somehow drawn, somehow it was, I felt like it was orchestrated that I ended up in that place. Okay. You know, uh, that's interesting because you're the second guest that we've had who's felt like th- through their life that they've felt like there's some sort of outside force. Um, that funnels them. Uh, yeah, that, that kind of guides them towards certain places, people, or, or, or things. And it always ends up leading to these uh, strange paranormal events. But if if I could for a moment, I just wanted to touch mm-hmm. back on the uh, the apples. I, uh, mm-hmm. You know, I... I, I Immediately to my it popped in my head was the idea. Well, obviously something was trying to lure you into the room, and then my next thought was, you know, geez, since the since the uh, uh, since Adam and Eve, uh, uh, women have have, have have not been able to resist an apple. <laughs> yeah, you know, and that's what, like my friend Rochelle. She totally knew like it was an apple freak, and first thing she says, "You didn't eat," and she was like scared. She said, you didn't eat an apple, did you, knowing darn well that I did? And I said, yes, I did. You shouldn't have eaten that apple. She was just freaked out about it, you know. And I kind of knew I shouldn't, but I was, like, we had no money for fruit or anything. I was so apple deprived, I just did it. And I kind of knew to myself, I said, you shouldn't have done that. Yeah. And then um, when we were, we finally got another place. I was at the Kingsway Bar in Edmonton, and it used to be, like, a huge, in the old days, it was just a huge bar with little round tiny tables, and they never served food or anything. It was just filled with people. People just sat and drank then. There was just hikers there and hippies there and you name it. It was just full. And all of a sudden, I'm sitting there with my friends, and all of a sudden, I feel a pair of little icy cold hands on my eyes. I said, guess who? And I knew. And I turned around, and it was that girl. The, the blonde one? Yeah. And she says, how are you doing? And all this. And I just was like, oh, yeah, you know, whatever, fine, you know. And Rochelle's just, like, looking, you know. And um, I just, like, kind of, yeah, whatever. I just kind of blew her off. And back happy here or whatever. And I just, yeah, well, nice talk to you. And turned back to Rochelle and just kind of totally tuned her out, blocked her out. And she left. I never saw her. You know, I was, never saw her again. But I remember that at the Kingsway Bar, she put her little hands on my eyes and said, guess who? And I knew who it was. Yeah, you know, I I got to tell you, she seems like a very mysterious character. Uh, <laughs> part she of me because her, they didn't even know who she was. They said they had no long lost daughter. 
Yeah, part of me wonders if she was a a, a ghost or something like that. You know, just I don't know. it's just such a, a strange thing. So, uh, one other thing here, you said now this was in uh, I think like the the second email or or something like that. So you had like mm-hmm. these um. You know, he had these events that that ramped up between like uh, 1970 and 1974, um, uh, but you said that this continued until an even stranger event occurred that gave you peace. Uh, yeah, um, and I, and I got my dates a little wrong. It was because um, my, my son was born in '74, and it was '76 when he was two. Well, maybe I said '76. It was '76 when this happened. And um, I always say my son, in a sense, saved my life because I was, I don't know where I would have ended up. I was, you know, pretty messed up kid. And I think the best thing ever happened to me was to have my son. I wasn't married. I was young, but it uh, pulled myself together and, you know, um, was doing much better. I still was having some of those weird things because when he was born, um, I had that um, monkey paw thing. A um, lot of tragedy. Um, I've had... Um, so many friends commit suicide, and uh, one gal that saw the monkey paws became schizophrenic and, and end up uh, uh, killing herself. Um, wow. Um, there was young people getting cancer in North Battleford, um, left and right, friends of mine, um, but my boyfriend went crazy. Um, just a lot of dark, bad things. When I sat down just jotted at that time, I, I just could not believe how much bad things had happened in my sphere of life uh, during this time. Eh? And I was still, you know, I wasn't um, looking at um, the occult as much as I used to, but I was still pretty interested in, in it. Now, I remember going to see The Exorcist when I was pregnant. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> my, my friend Rochelle, too, you can't go see The Exorcist when you're pregnant. <laughs> but I did. And I also knew the moment I got pregnant with him, like the, the, the moment. I oh yeah. Him, I went to yeah. The next day, I said to my my friend, and you know, it was with a um, Shane's or my son's dad. Uh, ended up, uh, it was a horrible, tragic thing. I I always sensed that there was something very dark about him, and that's why I I didn't uh, pursue a relationship and broke up. Um, I think part of the dark side attracted me to him, but as soon as I knew I was pregnant, I knew I just couldn't handle him and a baby. And um, he just, he went insane and, and uh, did, he scalped himself and cut off his ears and eventually killed himself. Just wow. absolutely horrific. Horrific. And yeah. I, and he did that like only in the last uh, five or six years. And he wow. phoned me uh, till Shane was 12 and uh, talk about, you know, being a dad, <laughs> but never was, you know what I mean? So I yeah. asked him just to quit phoning me, you know, and he just went like totally insane. He did drugs and everything, but everybody who, you know, knew he was Shane's dad, knew me, would say, oh, you just can't believe what's happening to him and stuff. And, you know, it, even though it, my heart broke for him because he had so much potential as a human being, the part, another part of me was not surprised because there was something very dark about him. And um, that, that was a very sad thing. But uh, his nickname was the Little Reverend. Okay. Because he... He liked to expound, and he was very intelligent and charismatic, and he could keep an audience captive, but he was very dark, and, you know, he'd have this little group of young, he was, he was like, almost 10 years older than me. He'd have a little group of young people just, like, in awe of him kind of thing, hey? Something about him, though, like, I always knew there's just something not quite right, like I can honestly say. So, anyway, my son's two, um, and um, an old boyfriend of mine, who was through some of that earlier stuff when I was like 16 and stuff, who yeah. I maintained a real good friendship with. He, in fact, was one of the few people who'd come back down from Edmonton or Calgary or wherever he was living and visit me while I was pregnant when everybody else was just living their own life and doing whatever, you know, yeah. that's just the way it goes. But he would come down and, and, and visit and make me laugh and just, just be just a cool person, eh? And out of the blue, he started phoning and wanting me to move to Calgary. He says, I want to be a, a father to your son and all this stuff. And it was like, what? You know, I could not believe it, eh? <laughs> and, I, and, and I'm and i like, what's the matter with you here? I says, you know, he says, no, really, you have to be so good for you. And he was relentless. He phoned for months. And then eventually I was thinking, oh, you know, maybe that is a good idea. Get out of this place and, you know, start fresh. And, and I said, well, you know, I will move up there. I said, I'm not moving in with you. I, I had a girlfriend who lived up there, so 
I asked if I could stay with her until I found a place. She said, yeah. And my mom and dad moved me and Shane up there. And away we go. And uh, he was living, um, which was not uncommon in the in mid-70s. He was living in a big house. He had a bedroom and they had a common kitchen, living room, and bathrooms and stuff. You know, and they may or may not know each other. You just rented the room. It's like a big communal type house, say. Right? Yeah. And uh, so I didn't go see him right away. I settled in, visited her for a few days. I don't know, maybe within four or five days of me going to Calgary, he eventually called and he said, come on over and see his place and stuff and visit. And I walk over to visit him, or drive over, I should say, and um, walk into the house and uh, there's this uh, chick there. And uh, I'm talking to Kevin, and this chick comes walking up to, to us, and she says, Hi, Sherry. She says, uh, How are you? And I went, Oh, fine. And I'm kind of looking at Kevin, and Kevin's looking at me. And I think, Oh, he must have been talking about me or something. So um, she says, Sherry, she says, I've been sent here to tell you to quit what you've been doing. Um, you're not in the dark. You're not in the light. And she says, You're open to, up to all sorts of uh, influences, and something bad will happen. Um, I killed myself, and... That same thing will happen to you if you continue. And then she walked away. And when I said to Kevin, who was that? He says, I thought you knew her. And I said, no, I'd never met her before. And he says, well, she knew your name. I said, I don't know her. And he said she just moved in um, that uh, like the day before. And uh, she had paid her rent and everything. And uh, she never came back. She never came back at all. Wow. And all of a sudden, Kevin... It was like he had lost total interest in, in being, you know, involved, being my son's father and everything. We just resorted back to our old, you know, friendship. And a month later, I moved back to North Alfred. Wow, that, that gave me goosebumps. That, that it was, was really weird. I can describe her to a T, too. To a T. She, because I, I'll just never forget her face. And I actually, I listened to what she said. I got rid of all my crap all my, you know, occult things, and I just started just blocking out anything that I thought was bad, and um, <clears throat> it, it improved my life a lot, a lot. It got much more peaceful. And uh, she looked like a vegetarian who didn't really do it well. And I saw a lot <laughs> in the 70s, you know, where they kind of have sickly-looking kind of, you know, very yeah. pale, kind of pudgy. Emaciated. Um, <laughs> well, she was kind yeah. of pudgy, but she had that unhealthy, pasty look, eh? And she uh, had I long see, yes. of that... Um, that, that blonde hair, this kind of no-name uh, um, ash blonde, you know, it, it's colorless kind of. Okay, yeah. Kind of that grayish. You don't know if it's blonde, brown, or gray kind of. It's just that and very dull. And that's why I thought she didn't have a healthy diet because her hair didn't shine or anything. And she had that pasty, slightly pudgy. She was wearing uh, was very common gear for 70s women. You wore a gym suit, you know, with no legs. It's just a gym suit, scoop neck, long sleeve, and you uh, wear them with your jeans. And she was wearing a black one like that. I used to wear the same thing. And she wore, you know, bell bottom jeans and everything. And uh, she was very pale um, and pudgy. And her hair was dull. And she had blue eyes. And she wasn't pretty. But she wasn't, like, ugly. She was just very plain. Okay. And, uh, yeah, she, that's she knew my name. That's absolutely bizarre. I mean, that's two different instances with with women where you have these these bizarre women just walk into your life make a strange statement and disappear for, either forever or absolutely you know, for a period and like one was kind of like not good <laughs> you know she gave up bad vibes this one i didn't get any vibes i was like shocked what she's saying and i and i said to kevin did she say she killed herself and kevin says yeah but you know like i, I wasn't sure if i heard that yeah, you know, it would be hard to compute that, hey? It's like it was well, very hard. Yeah, that, and um, and that and my house um, after that never had anything in that house bother me again because I I did go back and and live there for a short while before I got my own apartment in North Saddleford. Those are my, you know my folks. Um, <laughs> But most definitely, so you say, uh, but this was after you you had gotten rid of all of your old occult materials. Yeah, and I just quit reading it about it. That's interesting. And, uh, I just kind of, you know, blocked stuff. Like, that's what I do now. I just kind of, anything too kind of weird, I just kind of just, nope, just not going to go there. And, I, uh, I, sorry, go on. Yeah, and, and you know, just don't want to kind of delve into what I did before because obviously it was not good for me. 
Yeah. And I did suffer from a lot. I did, it, like, everything wasn't uh, uh, totally hunky-dory, as old expression goes. I still had a lot of, um, I suffered from bouts of depression. And I had, uh, throughout my uh, teen, teen years, um, anxiety and depression. I, but after that, it changed. I had some depression, but I seemed to get more anxiety than I had before. And I, I have, I suffer now with anxiety that I, you know, I can manage. But um, I think I think all that did it. That's my opinion. I think my whole experience um, caused it. You know, I, I can't help but wonder now. You, you got me wondering. Um, <laughs> I was, uh, I was yeah. waiting for that. <laughs> yeah, because uh, you know, I like you. You know, I I've always been interested in stuff like the occult and you know, and paranormal. I mean, that's just stuff that I've mm-hmm. always dug. And, you know, mm-hmm. a, a, as a young teenager, or, or for that matter, even an older teenager, uh, you know, I, n- I never really had um, issues with stuff like anxiety and stuff like that. And, of course, uh, good old Ryan there um, really pried at my interest in that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, before uh, after I met him and before too long, we were, uh, uh, you know, both of us uh, up to our necks in, the, in occult stuff. And, Mm -hmm. and oddly enough, you know, after the, after, like, I mean, we went through hell and back again, right? But after the fact, Mm -hmm. and after coming back from all that stuff, I, I actually have pretty, uh, you know, I, I manage it now, but yeah, I had some really bad anxiety and panic and stuff like that. And Uh, yeah, like what my biggest panic attack, um, the worst one where uh, a friend had to take me to the hospital, but the one and only they gave me sedatives and they weren't even working. It was. Oh, I've been there. I, I same thing. I, I the first time when I got hit with a really bad one, uh, I actually thought I was having a stroke because my face went numb. Uh, you know, wow. I, I was blacking out. I all, all all kinds of symptoms that you'd associate with a stroke, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, I, I I drove myself even though I shouldn't have because God knows I could have gotten in an accident, but. You know, I went mm-hmm. there, and, you know, and uh, they didn't know what was wrong with me at first, and they were r- put me in a wheelchair and rushed me down the hallway and hooking up equipment. I thought I was dying. Um, and, of course... Report like a stroke or something? Oh, my God, that was frightening. Oh, yeah, it was terrifying. And then when I found it was only a panic attack, you know, I, uh, uh, but I guess there's different levels of, of how bad you can have them. But, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I had a, a period there for a couple of years where... Um, you know, they, they were pretty frequent. And again, like was, I wouldn't wish it on anyone, even with all the drugs no. that they can give you, there's, there's nothing, you know, and, and even if you know it's an anxiety attack, you feel the physical Makes symptoms. The yeah. The, the physical yeah. symptoms are so strong yeah. that you can't shake it. Right. So, uh, but, you know, the, the funny thing was for the well, funny thing, that's a bad expression, but the weird thing was that, um, I had my first panic attack after one of my absolute worst, um, worst uh, depressions ever. Where I did feel suicidal. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I did. Yeah. And um, <laughs> something happened that when I told my boys, they like now my boys are by this time my boys are teenagers and they they still laugh their heads off. But I swear to God, it was true. Um, <laughs> it's embarrassing, but. I have a, had a border collie, and I loved him very much. He was just the finest dog. And he was laying beside my bed, and I was in the thing. I went for two days before I went to the hospital. I could not sleep. Yeah. And I didn't even get gritty eyes or anything. It's just like I had no sleep. And then I um, I got my pa- panic attack about two days later. Eh? Yeah. But I'm laying there, and the boys have friends over. So I'm up in my bedroom. It's a gigantic old bedroom in this old place. I love that huge bedroom. And um, my, my dog... I'm kind of embarrassed saying this because it's so weird. My kids laughed at me so hard. But my dog um, was sleeping, and all of a sudden I hear this. He, he sounds like he's kind of like howling, kind of, but trying. It sounds like he was trying to say my name. And uh, <laughs> then he woke him up. He woke up. He was sleeping. It was yeah. like, sure. It was like, <laughs> I have. I was so scared of my dog that I. I pushed him out of the door and shut the door. I was absolutely <laughs> terrified of him. But you know what I noticed with the dog? Why? He was scared. It really? scared him, but he, yeah, he was scared. Like, it was like it woke him up out of a dead sleep and with this weird noise, you know, like, 
I don't know, he looked scared when he woke up. He, he got up like all startled and everything, eh? And uh, uh, my kids had friends over, so I waited till the next day, and I told them oh, they laughed their heads off, and they teased me about it for a <laughs> whole Yeah, this is... Honest to God, I swear to God that he was trying to say my name. I got over being afraid of him um, like the, later that night. I got him back in my room. <laughs> but like at first, I had to uh, not have him in there because I was just so afraid. And then I went, I had a panic attack two days later, and um, I wrote a 10-page suicide letter because I was trying to write one where um, nobody would feel bad if I died. And then, you know what? I realized that there is no way that somebody wasn't going to feel bad. Oh, and then and I you, thought, you... well, I just can't, I can't do this. And so I ripped it up, and that's when I, I made a mental thing to change my life kind of thing. And I still live with anxiety, but like I don't ever, ever feel suicidal again. Ever. Well, that, that's good. I, in fact, um, I, you know, I, I know of people who have uh, committed suicide that I knew growing up, and I, I can say, and f- for anyone who's listening that, that, that contemplates that, because I know, you know, it, it's not a rare thing. Like, I mean, many people have, have thought about stuff like that, and I'm telling you, uh, uh, it doesn't matter who you are, people will be affected by it. Um, Absolutely. And yeah. that was like, I think, I think that was like the turning point for me, and I suffered with... Um, depression like you know for most of my uh, adult life and but it was like I broke through something like I broke through like that hopeless negativity that I think was uh, following me around well, well I that, really feel like I did well that, that's the good hopeless yeah. negativity yeah and um I think that um uh I think that there's a lot of like weird things that happened all around me like so many people died so many people uh, killed themselves. So many people got cancer. Uh, it was, it's just like crazy. It was like a wake of destruction all around me. And um, I don't know. I just, um, that, I think just sitting down and trying to, you know, write that letter, I think it, it made it, um, it made me just realize that just how, you know, it's how uh, destructively hurtful it is for everybody else, you know. So it wasn't for me that, you know, I did it. Uh, changed my mind because I realized I would devastate so many people. But I think it was that that mindset change that made me just see the world differently and and my situation. And from that point on, things went really have really gone well. You know, other than my anxiety. But I don't know. I think that's just something that uh, is a remnant that will always be there. Well, you know, like, you know, I work. I I I go out. I'm you know I'm okay, but I live with it. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's the way I am. And honestly, you got me mm-hmm. kind of wondering now if if you know there's a possible connection there between uh, you know delving into occult practices and coming out on the other side with you know he- here's your lasting uh, uh, effects. You know that that'll be with you, kind of a thing. Um, yeah, so Sherry, I, I gotta like ask, a... uh, s- since mm-hmm. you uh, you're you're from North uh, Battleford, uh, I I know yeah. that uh, there's been a, a series of uh, reports of uh, strange atmospheric noises or sky sounds. Yes. Uh, oh, have, have you uh, have you experienced any of that yourself personally? Well, not there, but um, my because uh, um, I know there's been ex- reports out of North Battleford. Yes. Um, I was watching the news, and it was on the news, eh? But, you know, my ex um, is working out of town, and when he's, um, he lives where he works, but when he comes in South Sudan, because it's a small town to, you know, see his friends and stuff, he stays at my place, eh? We're good friends. And um, he woke up one morning, and he said, did you hear that weird noise out there last night? And I said, no. And to him, it sounded like if you, like, a, kind of like, a, what do we call it again? A elk, like you're doing elk calls, kind of like a wind, a hollow if you had one of those things that you whip in the air and they make a hollow kind of woo kind of noise, he said it woke yeah. him up. And uh, he was talking about it in the bar uh, later that day with some other people, and other people heard it in this neighborhood too. And so then I, um, I said, well, gee, there was something in North Battleford. And then I kind of went in line, and I guess all over the world people are hearing weird things like that. Seems, yeah. seems to me like the, and, uh, oh, sorry, go on. Yeah, I, I just said, I'm, I'm wondering if that's like the same kind of noise. Well, it seems like, uh, to me anyway, that paranormal activity is after getting a lot more intensified everywhere as of late, and I don't know why that is, but, uh, you know, being a, someone who's got an avid interest in it, it's uh, 
is not a bad thing for me <laughs> personally. Well, you know, I just have sort of uh, recently in the last year started looking up to see if anybody else has ever seen the monkey footed thing, paw or whatever, um, because I, I just, I just want to know if somebody else in the world has ever seen anything like that. I don't know why that's so important to me, but it is. I got to tell you, I think I think you had it right when you said imp. I mean, it, it, everything Maybe. about it really sounds. I mean, you're talking about a small creature, a, a, mm-hmm. an incredibly small creature, and you mm-hmm. you have all of these activities going on in your, in your home that uh, you know sparks of, of you know uh, uh, mischief and uh, getting it's like enjoy- a taking philodendron. You know, it, it, nothing ever happened. It was scary and weird, and it hissed like a, a cat hissing. Yeah, I, th- I think they were having fun, like just like uh, mm-hmm. calling your name out down in the basement yeah. and, and your friends and stuff like that. I, I You know, mm-hmm. it sounded to me that they were getting a kick out of it because, I mean, I mean the, these things, I mean, I'm sure if they wanted to uh, uh, do something physical, they could have done it. They never, ever mm-hmm. uh, showed any malice in that in that sort of a way. It was just, you know, an impish behavior, mm-hmm. right? I mean, that, Yeah, that, it was just like to scare people or, you know, uh, make them unsettled, you know. Yeah, so I mean, did you ever find any other accounts uh, of anybody uh, experiencing no. something? No, and that drives me crazy. I put on the internet, you know, monkey paw. I always get like, you know, Edgar Allan Poe. You know, I just can't get anything. The only thing that I've ever, ever found that was even vaguely similar to mine was this uh, woman who uh, woke up one night and she saw, um, she thought it was a cat, her cat. Um, on the floor by the basement door, um, or like a Furby toy. She refers to it now as a Furby, um, like some little cr- creature. And um, she kind of fell. I remember that when I read it, that she kind of fell. But when she got up, she saw it wasn't her cat because her cat was there. She looks on the counter, and there's this monkey creature, small, she said, like a spider monkey. And it looked at her. And it opened its mouth, like she said, like it was going to shriek or speak. And she didn't know what was going to scare her worse, but then just disappeared before her eyes. That is, uh, that's uh, And that was online that I saw that. And that's the closest, because it was like a, she said, like a spider monkey hunched on her counter. I think you should Google uh, imps or, 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 you know, experiences. That's a good idea. Yeah, that that's what I would try looking at. Like, And again, I'm not, mm-hmm. it's, it's not that I know, I just... Uh, that's what came to my mind. But uh, that mm-hmm. said, uh, we're near the end of the episode there. Is there anything that you would like to share uh, with our listeners there before we uh, clue up? Well, definitely. If anybody um, has ever uh, had any similar experience, if they would they put it on your website, um, I would just love to be able to read if anybody else has had anything similar to what I've said. I would too, actually. So uh, if any of you guys are out there listening and you've had an experience similar to uh, Sherry's, I, you know, uh, you can email it to me or Ryan at will at fdupstories.com or Ryan at fdupstories.com. Oh. And Sherry, I'll, I'll send it to you if, if, if uh, anyone sends me any stories. Great. Yeah. And, and again, you know, I want to thank you for coming on to the show. Uh, really amazing story. I got to say, you've really surprised me with that one. Um, uh, where you stayed at that uh, apartment with the, the with the blonde misses and the and the closet yeah. and the witches and the, yeah that one that was that really was neat. A, <laughs> that was uh, that was uh, and like I have a witness for almost everything that has ever happened. That was the the girl was sitting there with me when um, she heard it too. Uh, and that's one thing I'm glad that I've had witnesses. The only thing I didn't have witnesses for was the dog. I wish I would have because my boys, like I said, they tease me. On <laughs> my, the one boy still who lives in a different city and he'll po- still periodically when, I, when he phones, he'll say, so any, had any dogs talking to me? <laughs> 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 If it ever happened to him, he changes too, and I'll tell you. Oh yeah, yeah. Horrifying. Well, well, that's just a <laughs> that's just a thing, right? It, it's it's funny until it's you, but uh, yeah, but right. but yeah, I mean, uh, really, really great stories there. I really thank you again for coming on the show, and for everybody else who's listening. If you have a story, pictures, video, anything paranormal related at all, 
Uh, you can and you want it on our website. You want it on our podcast. You can send it to Will at FDUPStories.com or Ryan at FDUPStories.com. And again, uh, in the near future, we'll be doing a podcast on uh, near death experiences, particularly the negative near death experiences. Uh, so if you have one of those, again, contact us uh, for a chance to be on the show. And we'll also be doing a fan-oriented uh, open line show. So if you have questions or uh, topics or something like that that you'd like to ask us, um, again, like you could be on that, uh, possibly be on that podcast. So you could send that to will at fdubstories.com or ryan at fdubstories.com. Be sure to check our regular website, fdubstories.com. And with that said, thank you, everybody, for listening. And thank you again, Sherry, for coming on to our show. Well, thanks for having me. It's been me. a pleasure and, speaking. Awesome. Oh, thank certainly. you, guys. It, it's been, yeah, thank you very much. Thanks. Okay. Bye-bye. See ya.